the Lord. Am I on? Am I on? Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. Bless his name. For the Lord God is good. And his mercy endures forever. Great is the Lord. And worthy of our praise. Praise him like you know him. Come on. Praise him like he did something for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. He alone is worthy. He's worthy of our praise, man. Welcome. Welcome, Turning Point Fellowship, to our midweek service. Welcome for you who are on YouTube and for you who are on Facebook. Welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. This is a Bible study where we go line upon line, chapter by chapter. We go right through the books. That you guys would just not learn cliches. Because a lot of people have cliches, you know, and they stand on cliches instead of standing on the Word of God. Amen? We need to learn to stand on the Word of God and declare the Word of God. Know that God's Word is our foundation. Amen? He's the rock of our salvation. Amen? And there is no other like our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to use my phone here tonight. I haven't done this in a long, long time. But uh, I'm going to just use it for uh, a reference I want to make out of uh, another uh, Bible uh, what, version. Another Bible version. There it is. Yeah, that's what I want to do. It's called The Passion. So I'm going to read a little bit out of that. But we're in the, the book of Ephesians. We finished off chapter 1 last week. So we'll start chapter 3 here uh, where the Apostle Paul is speaking to an area of churches. The, in the Ephesians, he writes this letter to them, and he's telling them who they are and how they're saved. A lot of people think that we're saved by works. We're not. You couldn't do enough work to get to heaven. You couldn't do enough right to get you to heaven. It was all by the blood of Christ, what he did on the cross. The work of the cross was sufficient for our lives. Amen. And I know a lot of people that don't understand the word, you know, that, what? I don't have to work. I don't have to do this. No, you don't. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved. Amen? You know, but when you fall in love with the Lord, you begin to walk as he walked. Amen? You want, to, you, want, you, you want him to be your example. You know, just like when you two fell in love. You know, you gave up things to be in love with each other, right? Can I get an amen right there? <laughs> you know, you do that because you, you love somebody, you know. You had to give up your friends and your buddies. It may have took a long time or a while, right, Patty? Can I get an amen? <laughs> but, you know, it takes a while for some men to get rid of their friends, right, you know, and just clean on to their wives because a man is to leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. Amen. And it, it takes time, but when you fall in love, you, you're, it's not even a sacrifice. It's just love, right? You know, I don't care about my friends. I'd rather be with him than them. Can I get an amen? That's when you know you're in love, you know, and your friends are no longer important. Uh, they're still your friends and all that. They're important in a certain way, but that guy, he, yeah. <laughs> you got to have that guy, right? Amen. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> nah. you, you know, and that's how it is with the Lord. When we fall in love with the Lord, the world doesn't matter anymore. Amen. For us to try to satisfy the world and be like the world and behave like the world, talk like the world, listen to its music, all that stuff is no longer important. You know, and no one's making us. We're not trying to do it to earn heaven. Heaven is ours already. My name, Angel Baruch, is in the book, last book of life. Amen. All I got to do is just continue to believe until the, I take my last breath. That's what God tells us. And that's what we're going to share about today, you know. Being saved through grace, by faith, and out of our own. Because when we start doing things of our own, guess what we do? We like to show off. We like to put it on Facebook, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm feeding the homeless. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, you know. Uh, it's all about us and not about Jesus. And, uh, and that's why, you know, uh, it's a fight. It's a good fight. Keeping your mind on Christ, keeping your heart on Christ, keeping your life lined up with, with the word of God. Not because you have to, because you choose to. I don't serve God because I have to. I choose God because I serve to. But if I don't serve God, woohoo, wee. 
it's going to be a bad thing, right? <laughs> when, when we walk away from God, it becomes a bad thing, you know. So I, I just want to uh, uh, share that with you and just welcome all you guys that are here. Uh, <laughs> praise God. We're going uh, to open up in prayer and then we're going to worship God. Uh, here at the House of Turning Point Fellowship, you can worship freely. You know, uh, we can move to the left, to the right. We can't move forward and back, you know. We can't do none of that kind of stuff. But we can go to the left. We can go to the right. We can clap our hands. We can raise our hands. If you got a shout in you, you got a shout of hallelujah, praise be to God. You can do all that. You're free in this house. This is a house, this is a house of freedom. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, I encourage you guys to worship God. And the worship isn't even for him, really. He, he loves that when his children worship him. But it's for us. Because we'll come in with the funk. We'll come in downtrodden, whatever it may be, with poochie faces on. And, before, and when you leave, you know what a poochie face is? You know, you're angry at the world and everybody in it. You know. Smile. There you go, Edgar. <laughs> But, you know, we love the Lord, and the Lord's going to change us, Amen. you know, from, uh, from glory to glory. You know, I, I looked that up from glory to glory because we say it as Christians, you know, from glory to glory and from faith to faith. From glory to glory, you know, you know what it meant? From the Old Testament to the New Testament, God's going to be glorified. From the old to the new, and that's how we, from the old man to the new man, God will be glorified in our lives. Amen? And we are the witnesses. We're the light of the world. We have the salt. We add flavor, right? We preserve people's lives because of the power of Jesus Christ that lives within us. You're supposed to be an illuminating witness. Can't be walking around with your heads down and all poochy face. You know, even if it's a bad day, you still smile because you got life. You got life in Jesus' name. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you we thank you for our lives and our salvation. We're going to bless you. We're going to honor you in this day, Father. We're going to rejoice in this day. For this is the day that you have made. So we're making a choice to be glad, Lord God. We thank you for the gladness in our heart, Father, the gladness in our steps, Father, the gladness that's in our minds. Father, we rejoice. And again, we say, we rejoice in you, Lord we thank you for what you begun in us. For the word says that the good work you begun in us, you're going to complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. We have an anticipation in our hearts to see you, Lord. To be with you, that's our anticipation. But while we're here on earth, Lord, we're going to be a blessing. We're going to be a blessing at our workplace, at our home, most of all. That's our main ministry is our home, Father. We're going to bless each other. We're going to honor each other. We're going to worship you, Father, in all that we say, all that we do, even in all that we think. We're going to worship you with our mind, Lord God. So as we open up your word, Father, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by this word, your word, Lord God. So we receive faith right now by faith. We receive it. We're going to be stronger, we're going to be wiser, we're going to be better for it, Lord. We thank you that you are our strength. That without you, Father, we are nothing. But with you and in you, Father, we're more than conquerors, Lord. So we're going to say thank you for our health, thank you for our sound mind, thank you for our children and grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, for those that are already there, Lord. Thank you for our husbands and our wives. Lord, thank you for our family here at Turning Point Fellowship and those across the land, Lord. We thank you for their lives. We ask that you keep them safe, keep the evil one away from them, keep the unreasonable person away from them, Lord God. Have your angels camped about them, Father, protecting them and watching them as your word guides them into eternal life and righteous living. So we're going to thank you. We're going to bless you as your word, Father, is followed by signs, wonders, and miracles. Father, speak to us today. Every one of us as individuals and as a church and as a family, speak to us. Our ears are open. Our hearts are open. Our minds are open, Lord, to hear what you have to say. We're going to bless you with our worship. We're going to bless you with our praise, Father. 
We're going to bless you with everything that we're made up of, Lord. We thank you. We bless you, Father, for every minister that is here, from the worship team to the ushers to the sound media, Father, to the armor bearers, to the teachers and nursery, nursery workers. We thank you for their ministries right now. I pray that their faith does not fail them. I pray that they will not grow weary in well-doing. Father, for in due season, they will reap what they have sown. We honor you and we bless you in Jesus' name. And all his beautiful people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Aleluya, aleluya, gózate, gózate. Let us worship in the house.
I am a friend of God. Oh, yeah. I am a friend of God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend. And I am a friend of God. I Hallelujah. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. 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 He calls me he calls me friend. 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 God Almighty. Come on, sing it to him. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him glory. We Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Worship he that calls you friend. You are worthy. Lord. Worship he that calls you friend regardless of what you've done. Regardless of what you've done, he calls you friend.
sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb.
everything and I will adore you with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings you are my everything and I will adore you Porque eres santo Señor Porque eres santo Señor Santo eres tú
many of you Healing's believe that? Healing's in the room. Healing's in the room. Healing's in the room. Lord, Lord I don't have your way. Have your way. Healing's in. Healing's in the room. By your strength, I am in healed. The room. You are healed. Lord, have your way. right now God is doing something you just allow him to do it you know what's in your heart what you want him to do for you a lot of us want to be free truly free 
want to be free from our past, free from our traditions, free from ourselves. Because sometimes it's us holding ourselves back. You want to be free, let, let God just have his way right now. Just raise your, ra yeah, just raise your hands. And say, Father, right now. For, for faith is now. Faith is right now. Receive from the Lord. Just receive it. Whatever you have asked of him, receive it. If it's forgiveness, it's his freedom. It's just walking in a liberty. Because some of us don't walk in liberty. We think we do, but we don't. Right now, forgive that person, whoever harmed you, whoever did you wrong, whoever talked about you. Let them go right now. You want to be free? Let them go right now. Right now. Gabriel, you can be healed right now. Your whole life can change right now. It happened for my son Bradley. God changed his life like that. God changed my life just like that. 24 hours, I was a different man. God began to do a work in my life. He took things for me that didn't belong to me any longer. A mindset. Some of you have a mindset of a, of a negative person. Everything that goes through your mind is negative. There's no winning in you. Got to get rid of all that. You're born and made in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the winner. He's your salvation. He's giving you salvation. And I'm not just talking about salvation eternally. I'm talking about here on earth. He's come to save your life from the troubles here on earth. You're going to have troubles, but they're no longer going to defeat you. You're going to learn how to overcome. You're going to learn how to say no to sin. When sin comes, you're going to say, no, not today. In Jesus' name, I'm overcoming. I'm overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. <coughs> I choose to live for God. You got to make a choice to rejoice. You got to learn how to be glad within yourself. Be glad for what you have and not what you don't have or what you want. Be glad what you have. You have health. Some people got big houses and they lay in bed all day long, depressed and oppressed. There's millionaires killing themselves every day. They have all the money they can desire, but they don't have the joy or the love of God in their lives. You have that. Take the opportunity right now. Right now. It happened for Barnabas, the blind man. Right now. It happened right there and then. For the man who sat before the beautiful gate. It happened for him right now, right there, right that moment. It didn't happen in a week. It didn't happen in days. It happened right there. For the woman who touched the hem of that, of Jesus Christ, it happened for her right now, right there. That's when it happened. It can happen for you right now. You can be healed from every sickness of your body. You just got to tell God, heal me, and I'll be healed. Save me, and I'll be saved. Amen. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. I believe in miracles. You know why I believe in miracles? Because I believe in God. God is a miracle worker. God does miracles every day. Somebody today that was lame in their legs got up and walked. Somebody that was blind today is able to see. Somebody that was dead today was risen. You didn't see it, but it happened somewhere in this earth. Could it happen in Afghanistan? It could have happened in Australia. It could have happened in Japan, China, Mexico. It could have happened right here in the USA. But you didn't see it. But it happened. I will guarantee you that. 
that today a miracle happened for someone. A miracle happened. And the greatest miracle is not seen again, it's not walking again. The greatest miracle is the salvation of your soul. And you get to live forever now. This body's going to hit the ground. It's going to turn to dust. That's the promise of God. Dust you came from, dust you'll return to. But your spirit man, your inner man, the man you talk to the most, the one you have a conversation with when you're in the truck and you're driving long haul, you're talking to him. It's you and him. It's your spirit man talking to your soul man. That's the man that's going to go forever before God because you believe in his son, Jesus Christ. We should rejoice. We should be glad in that. should never be a sad day for a Christian. You're going to have bad days, but they ain't sad days. You know what? Because I'm going to make a choice to rejoice. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise offering. Bless the Lord. Amen. You guys can be seated in the presence of our Father. Hallelujah. What's her name, Martha? Codeline. Wow. Cody. She's beautiful. She's a worshiper. She worships the Lord. I never worshiped the Lord at that age, right? Did you? Did you? Did you get a chance to worship the Lord? I can't remember. Oh, wow. Lay your hands on your head. Supernatural recall. God will give it to you. I remember all that. I, know. I can remember all my uh, elementary school teachers from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade. I can remember their names. What a blessing. I remember my childhood. I remember when people were mean to me. <laughs> David was his <laughs> No, hallelujah. We're going to receive our tithe and our offering. Come on, get excited. If you need an envelope, I got one meal. If you need an envelope, raise your hand up high. Si quiere un sobre, levanta las manos. Praise God, bless God. Any day now or what? Man, when you do? Six more weeks. Hallelujah. And the Estrada clan grows. Yes, praise God. But give unto the Lord out of a grateful heart, a thankful heart. And you may say, I didn't bring no money. I didn't bring a check. Guess what? There's a phone number up there. And you can give through that phone number. You text that phone number. It'll prompt you. It'll prompt you to another uh, page. And then you can go ahead and give. Give as the Lord had placed in your heart. If you're not giving your tithe, the tithe belongs to the Lord. That's his. We're no, there's no robbers in this house. Oh, let me say that one more time. There's no robbers in this house. Man, there's no thieves in this house. We give what the Lord is required of us, amen? Because there's some things that we ask of the Lord we want. But we got to learn how to be obedient to the Lord God, amen? And if you've already given your tithe last week, then now you give a free will offering. That's what you give. You give a free will offering that God has placed in your heart. Not one that you conjured up because yours is five bucks. You know, we're, we're little tightwads, you know, five bucks. No, whatever the Lord placed in your heart. If he says a hundred bucks, guess what? He's going to get you a hundred bucks. I've done that before when I first started. The Lord said put a hundred bucks. That was a lot of money for me to give, you know, to, to the church. To other people, back in the day, I gave way more than that, you know. But... When I was, uh, got saved, the Lord said, put 100 in there. And I said, oh, my God, I don't have 100. The Lord stood me up and go get an envelope. Stood me up. I didn't want to stand up. I stood up, got an envelope, put I owe you $100. And I put my name and date. And that come Monday, when I went back to work, a guy says, I just want to give you this, Angel. Guess what he gave me? $100. And I said, this is God's money. Because God trusts you. Because if, if you ask God for $100 and he gives it to you, don't, oh, this is mine. No, you ask God for $100 to give in this envelope or wherever you're going to give it to. But give out of a grateful heart and out of a thankful heart. Even some of you young people, 
You know, you still live with mama and dad, but you got your own job. You got to learn how to give. And you got to teach your children in the classrooms, don't give them pennies unless that's all you got is pennies. You know, because that's, you guess what they're going to do with God because you taught them pennies. But if you teach them, you know what, here's five bucks. I want you to drop that in the bucket. Here's two dollars. I want you to drop in the bucket. Here's 50 cents. I want you to drop that in the bucket in the children's thing. You're teaching them to be givers. And they're going to be receivers. And they're going to receive more than enough because the God that we serve is able to do far exceedingly above what we can ask. Or even think. Amen? Amen. So give unto the Lord out of a grateful heart. Pray over your offering before you drop it in. And say thank you Jesus. Amen. Father God, we thank you for each and every one that, that has given today, Father God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ to be upon us, Father God. We thank you. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our husbands, our wives, Father God. We also thank you that you saved us from the darkness into light and brought us into light, Father God. Thank you for uh, Pastor Angel and for the word that he's about to preach today. Please open our ears to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and uh, release our worship team. Last week I kept them up here a little longer. <laughs> so I'm going to release them first. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to release the kids right now. I just want to do some announcements before everyone leaves. Hermana Ruby, ¿cómo estamos? ¿Todo bien? Amen. Uh, 
Don't forget that this Saturday is potluck Saturday. I mean Sunday. I'm sorry, Sunday. Okay, forgive me, forgive me. My God. <laughs> Sunday is potluck uh, Sunday. Bring your favorite, uh, what is it, Western? Yeah, Western style. Oh, there it is up there, right on. Thank you, Jesus. So saddle up for Western style potluck. Bring your favorite dish out there for yourself and some more people. Amen. Don't forget we do need waters and, uh, and soda pop too. Little Capri juices and all that for the children. Uh, bring little waters because those kids just take two drinks and they leave the waters. He's, he's looking at me like, what? <laughs> so uh, we're going to be doing that. See Arlena. Arlena, raise your hand. Sister Arlena over there in the corner. Yeah. Enrique giving a pump. Yeah, right on. <laughs> That's his lovely wife there. See her. She's coordinating it. So uh, invite a friend. There's a power in an invite, especially when there's food involved. You know, Jesus told, Jesus told the crowd, hey, you don't follow me because of the signs and wonders. You follow me because I feed you, you know. And uh, we do too. Amen. So if you invite a friend and say, hey, I got lunch, man, I'm going to invite you to church, and I got lunch. Lunch is on me. All you can eat, brother, don't worry about it. Just come on down. And when they come and they think you're going to take them somewhere, right here, brother, we, we got a buffet going on. Amen? And they can come and eat. So uh, there's a list there. And then, uh, uh, so come on out. We've got the men's meeting coming up this Saturday. Come on, men of a higher standard. Yeah, all right. Yeah, see, I like to hear that. Hey, Amen. The men are excited about getting together. We have a beautiful men's fellowship, to be honest with you guys. Uh, we do. They're strong men. They love the Lord and they love their wives. And uh, they're learning to love you the way you want to be loved. They're learning that. And you got to tell them what you like. Can't just think that they're mind readers, you know. You got to tell them what kind of food you like and what's your favorite color and what kind of flowers you like and all that stuff. No, you could be married to them for 25 years. Some of them still don't know that stuff, you know. Just tell them, you know, what kind of shoes you like, what size dress you wear, what size shoe you wear. And they can buy you stuff. They can buy you a nice outfit. Amen. So uh, I don't know why I went there. But... Uh, <laughs> Women of virtue, come on, let's give it a grand applause. <laughs> October, we, uh, uh, we have Sister uh, Yvonne Lopez. Uh, she's going to be ministering here with her team. They're going to come and they're going to minister to the ladies. So ladies, invite a friend, bring somebody with you. A comadre, compadre, no comadre, I mean, no compadres. Comadres, you know, uh, your mother-in-law, your sister-in-law, your niece, your cousin, your co-worker. You never know. You could ask your co-worker. They may be hurting that day and say, yes, I want to go. I'm going to go. Amen? So uh, invite them out. They're going to have a, a guest speaker uh, right there, Kathy uh, Coppola. Yeah, Coppola. Yeah, she'll be speaking there. So uh, it's going to be a blessing. I encourage you guys to come on out and uh, be ministered to by the women of faith. Uh, our Harvest Night is coming out, Harvest Festival, come on. We're going to be doing that in the parking lot right there. Uh, uh, you guys can see Brother Bert right here. Brother Bert, raise your hand. See Brother Bert, him and his team are heading that off, and they'll tell you what, they, what, what they're going to be requiring of us. We're going to have trunk or treat. You have your own car. You can dress your car up nicely. No spooks, no goblins, goblins you know, uh, uh, and all those other creepy things, no Freddy Krueger stuff. This is a church, you know, so it's a harvest night, some nice dress-ups, even when you come in costume, you know, don't come in your short shorts and all that, you know, and please do not do that. Don't come in your vampire dresses all the way up to here. I never seen a vampire like that, but I don't know, <laughs> you know. Or, or, or nurses got their stuff all up. Nurses don't even wear dresses now. They wear pants, right? So come in pants. They're saying, come on back. Yeah, come on back. Just don't dress like that. Uh, so, but it's going to be a time of uh, fun for the children, all right? And we're going to be reaching out to the community. That's, that's what it's all about. It's, a, it's an outreach for our community. 
So we'll be hidden next door. We got 500 and some odd doors next door. We still got to work. There's a lot of work to be done. I think you guys kind of backed off on that. You guys aren't as excited as that when we got here three, four months ago. We have to stay excited. If we want them to be excited, we have to stay excited. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, we have our men's advance coming up no November. Amen. November 18th, 19th, and 20th. The cost is 190 bucks for the whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, you get fed food galore. You get fed food galore. I know uh, it's, it's good food for me. I, I like it. I know some of you guys don't like I like the food. You know, just don't overeat. Some of you guys just overeat. That's why you're getting all messed up. Yeah, it's overeat, man. And uh, so sign up, see Brother Hugo, Andy, or Brother Fred. Fred is the only one today. So Fred, raise your hand back there. He's doing our, our sound. Amen. Anna, you're going to have to let him stay a little bit, you know, about 20 minutes afterwards. Amen. <laughs> For he can get some sign-ups. You can lay your deposit down. It's going to go quick. This month is going to go real quick. We got about five, six weeks. So I encourage you guys to sign up. Uh, we have uh, guest speakers already <clears throat> that will be speaking, so it's going to be awesome. It's going to be on steadfast, learning how to endure, learning how to last, learning how to finish your race. Too many Christians do not finish the race. They backslide. They go back to the world, and, you know, you go out to minister, oh, I'm backslidden. Well, that doesn't give you a pass to sin, my brother. You know, you still, God still loves you, and he's still calling you out. Amen. They think that that's the past because they're no longer going to church or they're backslidden. That, oh, I have a right to sin. I have a backslider's past. <laughs> that cuts no ice in the eyes of God. Amen. Amen. You're still accountable for what you know in your heart. You will be accountable for it. Let's all stand to our feet. And then after we do this, children, we're going to release you. After we do this, Gabriel, after we do this. There you go. They're eager. I'm glad that the kids are eager to go to class. That's beautiful. I know mama's eager to let them go, too. Huh? <laughs> say it loud. Say it like you mean it. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive, about to receive. The, incorruptible, the incorruptible, the indestructible, indestructible. ever-living seed, ever seed of the Word of God. The word of God. I'll, never I'll never be the same. I don't want to be the same. Be the same. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, the kids can be dismissed and you guys can be seated. But let's give them a good round of applause as they go out. Come on. Celebrate the children. <laughs> celebrate them, the teenagers, all of them. Amen. You got to learn to celebrate your children, not just at church, but at home. Learn to bless them. Learn to tell them you love them. Learn to hug them. Amen. Learn to hug your children. And if you don't have children, hug your nieces, your nephews, your grandchildren, you know. Hug on somebody, you know. I remember when my son Lucas was about eight years old, and I, I would pick him up. My wife dropped him off to school, and I'd pick him up on the way home. And uh, every time he saw me, he, he was glad to see his father. That's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. And one day, he, you know, he, he runs, and he jumps in my arm. You know, I'm right there, and jumps in my arm, and I hug him, and I squeeze him, and he puts his legs around me. He's eight years old now, take it, eight, nine years old. And a woman, a woman tells me, really? Really? He's eight years old. And he still does that? I said, as long as I can carry my son, I'm going to hug him, and I'm going to carry him. I said, because one day I'm going to be old, and he's going to be big, and I'm not going to be able to carry him. I said, so I'll do it for as long as I can. You know, I said, uh, because I know how it was back in the Latino days, back in our heritage, you know. Uh, leave them alone, son hombres. And I, no, they're little boys. They're little girls. You know, we say, why do you act like that? Because she's a little girl? That's why she acts like that? You know, why does he act like that? Because he's a little boy. Well, I'm not talking about being spoiled or nothing like that. But he's going to act mischievous. 
He's going to be tra travieso. He's going to get into things. She's going to get into things. She's going to try your lipstick on. And don't go slap her around for, you know, a little $20 lipstick thing. Go buy another one. So you can have that one now. You know, it's a gift to me for you. You know, don't get all crazy like it's the last lipstick you're going to have. And I got one amen. The lady's like, oh, that's our lipstick you're talking about now. <laughs> if, if you would open up your Bibles to uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Praise God. I said, praise God. Yeah. yeah, we got to learn how to praise God. When somebody says, praise God, thank you, sir. Uh, got to learn to say, hallelujah, yes, praise be to God. You got to learn to stir yourselves up, you know. Praise be to God who always causes me to win, always causes me to triumph. That's what triumph means. He's always causing us to win. You know, the devil will try to say, this is over, it's done, but it's not. You know, he's going to tempt you to give up. He's going to tempt you to quit. Don't. Don't let him see you there crying because, you know, oh, I blew it. Father, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord God. For he can hear that. The enemy can hear that. And he knows that you know your rightful place. That God will forgive you. God will never reject the righteous. He'll never reject someone who comes with an open heart to him. Someone who stands righteous before God. And standing righteous before God is not because you live right. It's because your faith in Christ. God has declared you righteous because you believe by faith that you've been saved. You're saved now, Ben. You're back in the boat, my brother. You know what I mean? Don't get out the boat sometimes. Unless God calls you to get out the boat. Stay in the boat till we get to the other side. That's what the Lord told the disciples, right? Get in the boat and let's go to the other side. The only one he called out was Peter. And the other disciple says, you're crazy, man. You're going to walk on water? And Peter says, yeah, if he called me out, then I'm walking on water. And he walked on water for a couple of steps, right? Until he took his eyes off of Christ. And that's what happens to us. We're, water represents uh, our problems, situations, circumstances that come against us. We can walk on that stuff. You can walk with Jesus. And if you sink, call out to him, he'll save you, like he did Peter. And if you read that passage, they say that him and Peter walked back to the boat. So Peter walked on water. So you got to know your word and know your authority, know your power, know your rights, know your covenant rights as a Christian. Too many Christians live defeated lives. Too many of us live defeated lives instead of winning all the time. Yeah, you're going to go through things. I'm raising my hand. I'm a pastor. I go through things. You go through some battles. You go through some tough times. But you know what? Take your little cachetadas. Okay, that's enough. No more. Let's go now. Amen. Just like a dog. You kick a dog too many times, guess what? He's going to bite you one day. You know, you're going to get all mad at him. He's going to say, well, you don't like to be kicked either, man. I don't want to be kicked. <laughs> you know, I'm... <laughs> I've tested my dogs, right, Tanner? I've had fight with my dogs. I got big dogs, American Bulldog and an uh, Italian Mastiff. Big dogs. The gray one I don't mess with. He's too big. If I hit that boy, he bites me. It's going to hurt. <laughs> but I, I've learned how to love on my dogs. That was one of my deals to, to grow in. Amen? Because I was taught son animales, they're, they're just animals, they're dogs, don't, you know, but you learn that they're part of your family, you know, they, they grow up with you, from puppies all the way up now. So here we are, chapter 2, by grace through faith, if we were going to call this out, by grace through faith, by the favor of God, through the faith that we declare, the confidence, the trust that we have in God's word. That's what faith means. If you break it down, very simplistic. You know, people try to make it very deep, very hard. That's why Jesus came, because the Pharisees were trying to just not even tell the word or, or share the word with people. And if they did, they tried to put it at a level here that they couldn't understand. And Jesus had to come to earth through the love of God. He had to come to earth to share the word with farmers, with uh, people who worked in the markets, uh, with people who uh, were merchants, with people like us, everyday people. God wants us to know the word. God's word is not mysterious. People say, oh, you know, God works in mysterious ways. No, he does not. 
God works according to his word. And if you read his word, it's not mysterious. It's mysterious to the people that don't know his word. The God is woo. They think God is way, way out there. They think God is way gone. God is right here in our hearts. God lives within us if you're saved. If you're not saved, then get saved. We'll get you saved. And amen? Did you receive the spirit? God is not far. God is near. Amen? He's a help of trouble for those who find themselves in a rut or in trouble. Amen? And you have made, uh, and, and you he made alive. We were dead, but we're alive. Check it out. Who were dead in trespasses and sins, and when, in uh, which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who is now who now works in the sons of disobedience. When we live in a disobedient lifestyle, God ain't working in you. It's the enemy that's guiding you. It's the enemy that's leading you. And that's why I say we have to repent. You have to turn from your wicked ways and turn to God. And come on, we're going to speak the truth, right? Estamos hablando de la palabra de Dios. Amen. We got to call sin what is sin and we got to call righteousness what is righteousness. That we would get right before God. Can I get an amen? We got to get right. He said, you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the system, according to the ways. We all lived that way at one time. There, there, once in a while, there is somebody who did follow God from birth all the way up. That didn't make them a Christian. What made them a Christian was when they confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There's a lot of people that are raised in a church, like my son, Lucas. He was in his mom's belly, and this is, this is all he knows. This is all that your daughter knows, right? Uh, this is all Bubby knows. That's all they know. Some of our kids. That's all. This is what your baby knows, right? It's just church and Jesus. Hope, hopefully they know Jesus before they know church. Amen? We want them to know Jesus. So walking according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's the one that speaks to you. God speaks to your inside. God speaks to your soul, to your spirit, man. And your spirit, man, speaks to your mind. And that's why your steps are ordered to God, when you allow God to speak to you spirit to spirit. Those who love God, those who worship God must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Well, this, is how we, this is how we worship God. Worship isn't just singing to God and dancing before God and doing flags and spinning and speaking in tongues and all that. That's part of worship. Worship is your lifestyle. How do you worship God? Do you worship God with every breath that you take? With every thought? Because some of us have let our minds just take off. Pervertedly angry. Disobedient. We let our minds take off. And we, got, we have the strength, we have the authority that's been given to us through the Spirit of God to live right. To live whole. Our sins have been forgiven, he said right here. You got to know that. God doesn't look at you as a sinner no more. He looks at you as his son or his daughter. We've been forgiven. No matter what the enemy says, no matter what he tries to do to you, I'm forgiven, man. The blood of Jesus covers me. Amen? Covers me from the top of the head to the soles of my feet. If you believe that, you should say, you know what, I got victory. A lot of people, oh, I got the devil under my feet. I got the devil under my feet. And all of a sudden something happens, you're like, the devil, he's just messing with me. I thought you had him under your feet. Keep your foot on his neck if you got him under your feet. By praising God and blessing God and living for God. Amen? He's going to go after somebody else. You know, nah, nah, that sister knows too much palabra. She knows the word. She uh, uh, knows how to walk in it. She knows how to conduct herself in it. Not right now. I got to come back another time. And he tries to come back to you when you're weak, when you're uh, vulnerable for the things of this world. Amen. That's when he comes. And that's when you got to put your guard up. Right now I'm a little sore. Right now I'm not feeling it. But you know what? I got my shield. I got my helmet on. I'm ready for battle, baby. You know, I'm going to be the offense. I'm not going to be defense no more. I'm going to be an offensive player. I played a lot of offense when I played high school football, so I love it. So he said, walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. 
among whom also we all once conducted our lives in the lust of the flesh. This is how we live one time in our lives. Amen. Letting this flesh control our lives and conduct the way we live. It should not be so, Christian. You have the power of the Holy Ghost living in you. He says, I've given you all authority and all power to walk over the serpents, over the serpents, over the scorpions, and over every trick of the enemy. You're reading your word. You stay in your word. The enemy can try every trick he wants. It ain't happening no more, my brother. Not here. I overcame all that. Amen? I'm not talking about walking in arrogance, but walking humbly before God and knowing who you are. Before you, God, you walk humbly, not before him. You don't walk humbly before the Satan. Walk humbly before God, and God will lift you up and strengthen you up, teach you how to battle. Can I get an amen? You're here because you're battlers. You're here because you're warriors. You overcame a lot of stuff. Amen? The devil tried to take you out, and you made it. You made it. And he's still trying to take you out, right? Trying to get you distracted. Get you off what you know. That's why King David says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I would not sin against you. Not that we sin against man, because if we don't sin against God, we're not going to sin against man. When our hearts are right with God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Among whom also we have once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. There it is. We got to renew our mind through the word of God. Without the renewing of the mind, you're going to stay the same. You can go to church all you want. You can attend Bible studies and take Hebrew and Greek. You can do all that stuff. The enemy is like, go ahead and go for it. <laughs> your heart ain't changed. He doesn't want your heart to change toward God. He wants you to know who God is, that God will change your heart. Can I get an amen, church? He says, in the mind, we're by nature children, and we were children of wrath, just as the others. But God, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, even while you were a sinner, Christ died for you. And God called you his son, and he called you his daughter. Ain't nothing you had to do but receive Jesus Christ. And all that's forgiven, whatever you lived, in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the mind. Because the mind, whoo, that little boulder, that little ping pong you have up in there, you know. That little mind can go, huh? And that mind will take off and take you to Disneyland. I didn't say Disneyland. I said Disneyland. It'll take you to Disneyland. Keep you out there further than you, take you further than you want it to go and keep you longer than you want it to stay. In your sin, you know. Oh, I'm just going to try it one time. Just one time and I'll be okay. Just one time, one more time, one more time. You don't know if you're coming back. I've known a lot of brothers that tried that and they ain't back yet. I, I pray for God's mercy to be upon them every day. And they would come back to the fold. Amen. I'm not wishing nothing bad on them. I'm not praying nothing bad on them. I'm praying the mercy of God, the love of God be upon their lives. And have them come back. Did he love them so much that he's pulling on their heart? That's how people get saved, through the love of God, by the power of the Spirit. But God, who is rich in his mercy because, he, because of his great love on which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses. Do you know when you live in sin and you practice sin, you're dead to God? It's right here. Thank you, sir. It's right here. It's in the Bible. I'm not telling you nothing different. I'm just repeating the word of God, giving you a little revelation God gave me. So if you want to get angry at me, Steph, not at me. Get angry at God. Amen? And you have no right to get angry at God. Don't be foolish. He'll he'll allow that, but don't be foolish. Be mature. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen? Amen? Even when you were dead in trespasses, he made you alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised up uh, to get, raised us up together and made us to sit together, check it out, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where God has positioned us now, in heavenly places. 
in the body of Christ. You live in the body of Christ, and the body of Christ lives in you. That's a beautiful thing. We were down here, but now we're up here. We're the head, and we're no longer the tail. Amen? We're above only now, and we're no longer beneath. When we believe the word and follow the word, God saved you for a purpose. He didn't just save you because you're cute. He saved you because you have a purpose on this earth. And if it's to save one purpose, let it be so. If it's to save 100 souls, let it be so. If it's to save your family, let it be so. God has an assignment for every one of us. It may be a co-worker you hate at work. I don't care if you hate her. I want her saved. I'm not asking your opinion if you like this person or dislike this person. This is the way the Holy Spirit talks to me. It don't matter, Angel, how you feel. I want him or her saved. So I need you to go over there and do that. And we got to go and do that. Oh, nah, Lord. Are we going to be like Jonah? No. Nah. Kill them all, Lord. No, we're not going to be Jonas. We're going to be like Jesus Christ. Amen. Come and share the love of God. The experience of God that you have. Amen. You've experienced God. People have not experienced God. It's a beautiful thing. And heavenly places in Christ Jesus, verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. That's what he wants to show. He wants to show his grace and his kindness in Christ Jesus in us and through us to the world. But some of us can't even be kind to the brothers in church. We got to learn how to be kind and loving toward one another. Can't even forgive the person you, you sleep next to. Come on now, amen? Let's be kind. Let's be nice to one another. That's what he wants. That's what he's expecting. There's an expectancy from God too. Just like you guys expect things from him, he expects things from you. You know, I tell you guys think that God is just a genie. I'm going to rub my Bible and <clears throat> I'm going to get what I want. You know, I named it and I claimed it and it's mine, you know. Oh, they're claiming another man that's already married. You can't have that, man. You missed it, you know, amen. There's a lot of things we miss it in. It's according to God's will, amen. When you call something out, let it be God's will. His word is his will. So he says right here in, in verse 8, for by grace, by the favor of God, if we can put it like that, you have been saved through faith through your confidence and your trust and what was done on the cross. You put your confidence in that. What Jesus Christ did on the cross, that he died for the sins of the world, that he got slapped, he got beat to unrecognition. He couldn't even be recognized. He was whipped. Reading the word this morning, and he says, no one takes my life. I give my life. He gave his life for us. He made an exchange. Imagine that. Did he make an exchange for you, for him? You come into heaven and I'm going to go suffer for you. Shh. That's powerful, amen? That's a powerful thing. I'm up here. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. It's a gift. He's presented you with life eternal. Not of works, not of something that you can earn. That's what works means. Lest anyone should boast. We boast in the little that he gives us. Imagine if he gave us more, how much boastful we would be. Oh, I laid hands on them, and that's why they recovered. Oh, me and my brother went to the hospital, and we prayed for a whole hour. You know, we, we name everything we did and give God no glory. We as men want to give God the glory. No, God used you. You were an instrument of righteousness. They decided to use your name and use you to go to a hospital, go to someone's house, preach a, preach a sermon, teach a sermon, win a soul. He used you for his glory and for his honor. And he used you because he knew that he could trust you to say, all glory belongs to God. None of it is mine. 
I've done nothing but follow instruction. All I did was repeat the word of God. All I did was mimic God. Jesus says, I speak nothing of my own. Everything that I speak is of my Father. Everything that I say is of my Father. The signs and the wonders, he's telling the Pharisees this. God did it. My Father did it through me. But that you would believe in me, the one he sent. He says, the one that you'll die, he, says, he tells them, all the Pharisees, you'll die in your sin. Because you didn't believe God sent me. And that's how the world is today. The world is going to die in its sin. Because they won't believe who Jesus is. Oh, they'll say they believe in Jesus. But tell them to come to church. They ain't coming. Tell them to go to Bible study. They ain't going to no Bible study. Do, do you listen to Christian music? Oh, no, man. They don't even listen to Christian music. They can't even listen to a full sermon on the radio. Because it irritates them. It bothers them. And they say they're Christians. Us Christians got to learn how to eat that bread of life. Amen. Amen. That's what he to told the disciples, told the Pharisees. Unless you eat of my uh, uh, flesh and drink of my blood, you're not a disciple of mine. And a lot of them said, this is a hard saying. And they turned away from him. And he turned to the 12 and said, will you lead me too? And Peter was smart. Then Peter already got all his heads bumped up a couple of times and all that. And can, can I get an amen right here from my Peter? Amen. Praise God. You get your head bumped and all that stuff. And then Peter says, no, nah, you got eternal life. Your words are eternal life. Where are we going to go? Where am I going to go to? Us Christians, where are we going to go to? Where are you going to go in a world that's going to be better than salvation of Jesus Christ? There's nothing better than the salvation of God. You're saved. Amen. Christianity's boring, cuss, because you're, you're a boring person. You're just boring. Christianity is not boring. You can hang out with me, and we'll find it out. Amen? <laughs> Verse 10. Check, check it out. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. This was already orchestrated by God, already done by God, that we should walk in them. God has already prepared your life, Ray. Your steps, the steps of a righteous man, the Bible says, have been ordered of God. And he says, go this way, Ray. Go this way. Follow my path. And I'll lead you to eternal life. A lot of us get hard-headed. We get tercos. We get cabezones. I'm going to do it my way. It's, this ain't Burger King. You can't have it your way. It's God's way. And we got to be following the steps of the righteous one, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen? So he says here, uh, the good works. The good works is uh, uh, the workmanship of God. And it's, it, it's the word, uh, uh, I can't pronounce it. I'm going to give it my best. But it's spelled, if you guys are writing this down, taking notes. P O. I-E-M-A. That's the Greek word. P-O-I-E-M-A. Poema. It's like the word, it, 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 why don't you say the word poem? And what's the poem? What's a poem writer? It's a work of art for the poem writer. It's a work of art of an artist seeking to express himself in his word. A man who has thought, who has meditated and begins to write poetry. Something beautiful, something lovely. Are any of you guys romantics? I mean, real romantics. A romantic will write love letters to, to his wife. Buy her a song and say, this song reminds me of you. You know, he's a romantic. He, he, he's going to romance her. He's going to woo her. He's going to win her over. That's what a romantic does. And this is God for us. God is a romantic. He's writing poetry. We are his poetry. Amen. You are his work of art. And he loves you and he begins to tell you how much he loves you and how much you deserve to live this life. And we still don't want to believe him. But you're his workmanship. Prepared and made for good work. 
a good life, an honest life, a righteous life, a life that smiles, a life that laughs, a life that's full of joy. What happened to that? We've allowed man and we've allowed woman and people to rob us of our joy, and they didn't even give us that joy. You guys got married and everything, you thought everything's going to be all hunk of dory. I'm raising my hand too. Then, after a couple of months, a year, like, oh, it ain't all that in a bag of chips. It's going to take work to keep this man happy. Oh, it's going to take work to keep this girl happy. It's going to take some work. Amen? And we learn. And we learn to do that. Can I get an amen? amen. So God prepared this beforehand. You're God's poem. You're his workmanship. He wants to express himself in you and through you. That's what God wants to do. He don't want no roughnecks. Some of us Christians are still roughnecks. We're still rough people. He's trying to smooth that out. The rough in your life, he's trying to smooth that out. The crooked in your life, he's trying to straighten that out. If we just let him. But you have to let him. You have to surrender and say, Father, straighten me out. Straighten out my mind. Straighten out my mouth. I talk too much. I say the wrong things at the wrong time. You got to know who you are. You got to know that if you're rough and you're not sweet. You got to know that. I need to. No quiero decir algo que va a caer mal, me voy a quedar callada. Porque así es Cristo. Sometimes you think that God is not there because he's quiet. He wants to hear what you got to say. Instead of complaining, thank him that your life has changed. You're not, you're not all that you want to be, but you're better than what you used to be. Amen? Thank God for that. Oh, yeah, I want to prophesy. Oh, yeah, I want to preach before big people, and I want to preach to a lot of people. Well, prepare yourself in the word first. And God's going to allow you to do that. God will give you the opportunity. Amen. And it starts off with little things. Like some of you ladies, we need help. Some of you men, we need help. We want to do great things before we do little things. It doesn't work like that. Can I get an amen? Verse 11. I'm almost done here. Right, guys? Back there. Amen. It says, therefore, remember that you were, you were once Gentiles. Check this out. This is beautiful. In the flesh, who are called uncircumcisions by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by man. Where's my phone? I want, I want to read this right here. What is it? Uh, 11. I'm going to read it out of the uh, passion. The passion really brings it. Really brings it. So don't forget, you were not born as a Jew, and you were uncircumcised. Circumcision itself is just a work of man's hands. You had none of the Jewish covenants and laws. You were foreigners to Israel's incredible heritage. That's us, Gentiles. You were without a covenant and prophetic promise of the Messiah, the promised hope, and without God. Yet, look at you now. Everything is new. Although you were once distant and far away from God, now you have been brought diligently close to him through the sacred blood of Jesus. You have actually been united in Christ. You've been united in Christ. We were far from God. Let me read it again in the King James Version. Therefore, remember that you were once Gentiles in the flesh. You were called uncircumcision, by which called the circumcision made in the flesh by hand. That at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of, of Israel, without the promises. Strangers from all covenant of promises. Having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus you were made once, you who were once far off 
have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We're equal now. And we're going to read that next week. We're equal with the Jews. We're even, God made us all one people through Christ Jesus. There's not Jew or Gentile. There's only one, the sons and the daughters of Christ Jesus, of God himself. Amen? That's who we are as Christians. And when people talk about, you know, these different type of churches, you got Lutherans, you got Calvary Chapel, you got uh, 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 Jehovah Witnesses, you got Mormons, you got Lutherans, Pentecostals, Word of Faith, you got all these churches that are all divided instead of being together in Christ Jesus. Oh, I'm a Lutheran. Oh, I'm a Baptist. What's that got to do with God? That's a title of man. Circumcision of man. Setting you apart for themselves and not for God. There's more Hispanics in this church, but that don't make this a Latino church. This is Jesus' church. This is the culture of God. Amen? That's what this is. This is a culture of Jesus Christ. A culture of Christianity, that's what we are. So people ask you what kind of church you go to, a Christ Jesus church. One who believes in the Bible, one who shares the Bible, one who reads out of the Bible. Not a man's re uh, imagination. Not of excitement. I don't want to get you excited. I want to, but not in the way that pump you up and be a cheerleader for you. And you walk out of here all pumped up. And when you get to McDonald's or uh, wherever you're going to eat afterwards, uh, what was the sermon about it? Uh, I don't know, but it was good. <laughs> what did he say? Oh, bro, if you were there, it was good. Give, give me a little clue right here, bro, you know. Give me a little gold nugget. Man, it was juicy. It was good, brother. He ain't said one thing about the sermon because he didn't remember nothing. That's why there's homework. Your homework is to read chapter 2 of Ephesians. Read it. Study it. Meditate upon it. And when you come back next week, you should know it as well as pastor because you got seven days now. To study it out. Every day you could read it. Take you about 10 minutes. But then when you begin to study, it's going to take you about half hour, an hour. Put the phone down. I will challenge you right now today. I'm going to challenge you guys. Put the phone down for a half hour and read your Bible. I want you to tell me next week you did it. I did it all seven days, Pastor. I did it three days. I did it four days. I did it two days. I did it one day. But show me that that phone doesn't have power over you. Because that phone calls you, right? It could be in the other room. It could be in your car. Oh, my phone, it's calling me. My, my phone, I hear it, I hear it. Right? And we go to that phone. And we'll spend there two hours, hour and a half. I'm being kind. Because I know we do more than that, right? Let's get in the Word. Well, I'm not, I'm not receiving nothing there. Not because of me. Don't blame me. Why am I on fire? Why do I love the Lord? Why do I know the Scripture? Because I study and I read. You should be the same way. You should be excited about the word of God. You should be studying the word of God. You for yourself, not for me. You're your own man. Because if I told you something, you would say, I'm my own man, Pastor. You can't tell me what to do. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I got three children trying to tell me what to do. No, I'm trying to lead you to eternal life. I'm not trying to keep you alive because the enemy's out there trying to kill you. Right? He's come to kill, steal, and destroy. And he would destroy your life if you let him. He'll kill your life if you let him. He'll steal your life if you allow him to do it. He has no power. He has no authority. Only the one you give him. Let's all stand and praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <sighs> You're handing out some visitor cards. It's the first time here. I'd like to fill them out. You can fill it out, you know, uh, I'd like to give us your email, your phone number. Uh, we'll just call you when things are happening, like you guys seen the, uh, the uh, announcements. If you want to put those up and just roll them, just roll them slowly. I'm not going to go over them no more. They're there just for a reminder for you guys.
The only way we're going to grow is when you invite somebody. And sometimes it may be somebody you think the least of. He'll never want to come to church. That's what they said about you, too. That's what they said about me. Yep. Angel Baruch, you're going to invite him to church? That brother never going to go to church. I went to church all local there, remember? <laughs> yeah, because some of you guys came that way, too. All messed up. But you came. That's all that counted. And God did something in us. It's not just even about drogas. Sometimes you come with anger, disappointment, pain, divorce, separation, right? Disobedient kids, you come because you're seeking God. You want peace. You want to know how to get this thing worked out. And you come to the right place, the house of God. And imagine when you both start working together, how powerful you guys are going to be, Rose and Mike. You guys are powerful people who don't even know it. Forget Tom Brady. He ain't got nothing on you, Mike. He ain't got nothing on you in, in scriptures, you know what I mean? In the word of God. He may have six, seven, what do you have, seven uh, Super Bowl rings. But does he have Jesus? Does he have Jesus? Well, these brothers got world titles, but do they got Jesus? Some do, some don't. We got to have Jesus. Father, we bless you and we thank you for our lives, which are in Christ Jesus. We thank you as your word has declared, Father, we have been set, sat in heavenly places with Jesus Christ our Lord. That, Father, we're no longer beneath, but we're above, Father. We're serving you, we're honoring you with everything that we have, Lord. With all our might, with all our strength, and all our mind. We give it all to you. We surrender today and forevermore. Father, we declare and we say that our lives are yours and your life is ours. We are your sons, we are your daughters, and you are our father. So we thank you for the word that we heard today. I pray that the enemy would not come and steal this word, but this word would be sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within them. That you would give them a supernatural recall of what was spoken today, Lord God. That they would review the video when they get home today, tomorrow, that they would watch it again. That that word, Father, which would begin to just kindle and grow a fire. A fire for you, Father. That it would grow fruit of love, peace, patience, kindness, mercy, forgiveness, Lord. Forbearance. Father, that it would bear your fruit in our lives. And it would be evident in our lives that we wouldn't have to go around telling people we're Christians. They would know by our actions and by our words, by our lifestyle, these are Christians. So we bless you and we thank you for the good work you've begun. We're going to have confidence that you're going to complete this work in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding of your word, Lord God. We ask that you protect the little ones that are next door, our children, our youth, that you protect them and watch over them, Lord God. As they go back to school tomorrow, that they'll be divinely protected from all the wicked ones and every wicked person, that your blood would cover them and your angels would sound, surround them. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, a divine protection over them, over our wives and over our husbands, Lord, over our family, our home. No break-ins, Father, no damage to our homes, just a safe place that we go home and take refuge because we know you're there, Lord. So we thank you and we bless you for on the way home, Lord, no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires, not even a ticket, Father, just a joyful ride on the way home. Bless this time, Father, as we bless you, bless our weekend, as we enjoy each other and as we enjoy the weekend you've given us. Let you be glorified. Let you be honored. In Jesus' name. And all his people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget to shake hands and hug on. There's two young ladies right here. Brother Ralph brought his friend right here. And there's a, 
And uh, Sister Jessica brought a friend, too. So go up, ladies, and shake their hand. You men, too, you can go up and shake their hand. Hug on one another, love on one another, and we'll see you Sunday. Potluck Sunday!